another week, another episode of Pet Pals TV. Hello, and thank you for watching us wherever you find us, all across the uh, state, the region, the country, the internet. I'm Paul Poteet, and Patty is standing by here in just a few moments. Uh, our stories touch a lot of people, and we have a bit of a bittersweet follow-up on a story that recently gathered a lot of attention for us, and Patty is here with some special guests. Patty. Thank you, Paul. Now an update on one of our most popular stories that we've had over the past few years, Irwin the Wallaby. Really a wonderful story, but unfortunately we do not have a very good ending to this, but at least we have some closure now. John and Stephanie are joining us. Irwin was the Wallaby who captured everyone's hearts. Uh, they fell in love with him. He escaped recently, and you found him, and what happened? Yeah, we think a coyote got him. Um, he got out through our screened in porch at, right after we moved into a new neighborhood. Okay, so you were still working on his containment? Yes. And, okay, mm -hmm. and he was inquisitive, as wallabies are apt to be? Absolutely, he, he loved checking everything out. If he was ever in a new place, he, he just wanted to see what was new, meet everybody. Mm -hmm. But when he got out, he didn't have any life skills. He didn't know how to yeah. defend himself or run away. Right, because he's used to staying with us in our house where we're looking after him. So, okay. Are you going to get another wallaby? You know, we're going we're to take a little while. We're going to grieve a little bit. But in the future, if we get another pet, it might be a wallaby. Sure, sure. I mean, he's a great pet. And you did your research, so you knew what you were getting. And you, Absolutely. You know, and animals do, pets do get out. And unfortunately, this is yeah. one of the sad things that happened. So also check and see if a wallaby is allowed in your state or your neighborhood or your Absolutely. apartment complex. So, mm -hmm. But you did all that research correctly. Absolutely. Okay. If you will, indulge us a little bit. We're going to check in with Irwin. And here he is in happier times. Now two years old, John got Irwin from a private zoo in Tennessee when he was five months old. This Bennett Wallaby is named for Steve Irwin. And he definitely is a conversation piece. You ever have those awkward moments with somebody be like, well, I have a wallaby. When Irwin's out on the town, he gets plenty of reaction. A guy walked in and saw him and was like, oh, I got to stop drinking. <laughs> we were walking out and one of the cops was like, hey, hey. It's like, oh, wait, all right, we might get in trouble here. He's like, Can I get a picture? But a wallaby? I can't stand the really annoying yappy dogs, so I was like, well, he doesn't make any noise, so that's good. And mostly just through all the stories, it seemed like a really great idea. John had taken a trip to Australia, where he first met wallabies. He returned to Indiana and began to do his research. In Indiana, you have to have a permit for an exotic pet, unless they're on the non-aggressive list, which wallabies are kind of like ferrets and some other exotic animals that you commonly see as pets and whatnot. The laws vary by state. Some states outlaw pet wallabies altogether, and even in wallaby-friendly states, they may not be for everyone. But he's got quite the personality, he's a lot of fun. John and Stephanie wanted Irwin to demonstrate his wallaby door, a screen he hops through to get back inside. We set up a camera and waited, but in true wallaby fashion, Irwin had his own ideas about showing off. Oh well. He is very strange, but He's adorable. Wallabies require a special diet, a fenced-in yard with lots of exercise, a large litter box, and plenty of socialization. And you gotta understand that they're a little bit more work. But if you're willing to devote all of that, then yeah, he's pretty good. He's a pretty good pet. There, got him. <laughs> Joy Hernandez for Pet Pals TV. Thank you, Stephanie and John, for sharing your story. We know it was difficult. Irwin, rest well. Indiana summers are great for outdoor fun, but unfortunately the warm temperatures also mean more parasites for our pets. Fleas, ticks, and heartworm carrying mosquitoes are out there waiting to feed on your furry friend. At NOAA's Animal Hospitals, we will help you find the best medication to keep your pets safe and meet your specific needs. Now with eight central Indiana locations, there's a NOAA's nearby ready to be the best friend of your best friend. It's still hard to believe Oliver just ran away. Why take the chance? Invisible Fence brand keeps tails wagging safely in the yard and off the streets. We believe it's important to dress alike on the Pet Pals team. Look at that. It even Louie is in on the act, too. Please go to our website, PetPalsTV.com, and you can find up there in the corner. Click on it, and you can look like we do. We've got your size. The Milano Inn has been proudly serving Indianapolis since 1934. Thank you for making last year's fundraiser, Pasta for Puppies, a smashing success. 
We're back again this year, offering the finest food at this traditional Italian restaurant and extending another invitation. And I'm looking forward to seeing you and your puppy in the courtyard to help raise money for these beautiful creatures. See you seven days a week, lunch and dinner on the patio with your puppies. Applying for Social Security Disability Benefits or have you been denied need to appeal? We can help. There's no fee unless we win the case for you and we've been serving Central Indiana's legal needs since 1972. Please call us at 844-1377. Bed and Biscuits. Send your dog on vacation. Indoor and outdoor kennels in a country setting, daycare or long term. 867 Bone. Online, bedandbiscuit.us. Bed and Biscuit, where a dog can be a dog. Hi, it's Dr. Kathy, and Clark is here. We're going to talk to you about ear cleaning. Why ear cleaning? I get this all the time. There's a lot of controversy about what to stick in a dog's ear. Nothing. That's the answer. Uh, one of the things I learned early on was I can do Q-tips in my ear all day long. If I do that to Clark, he's actually going to get more irritated and have more brown goo. So, you can either buy a product. Vintage Doggy Spa has an already made ear cleaner or you can actually make it yourself. Real quick in water, this is a 16 ounce squeeze bottle and just two drops of dish soap, something nice and innocuous, Dawn is fine or anything else. And then the acid rinse because we need to acidify and dry. It is 25% apple cider vinegar and 75% water. So Clark is going to be demo dog. He's not sure he wants to be demo dog. So first I'm going to put a good amount into his ear and I want it to go slosh. So I go squish, 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 squish. Go the other side again, and we feel, oh, I know, I know. Super squish, oh, that's good and sloshy. Hear that? There, sloshy. And then the last step, which is why we're outside, is you step back and you watch out, and he flings everything out. And then if I need to, I have a little cloth to wipe off on the outside. Never put anything in the ears. Got to keep ears clean, got to keep them healthy. Let's get them before we have a major infection. I'm Dr. Kathy, and that is how we clean ears with Clark. Thank you. Know your breed. Brought to you by Noah's Animal Hospitals. If you're on the hunt for a good dog, the beagle may be for you. We can trace the first beagles back to the 1500s. English hunters used them to track down rabbits. Today, they're used to sniff out bed bugs in hotels and narcotics at airports. Pet parents say the beagle is loving, sweet, and happy to see everyone. Excellent with children, but they may not be fond of cats in the home. The beagle will live from 12 to 15 years. Grooming is easy with a brush and occasional shampoo. At home, the beagle will track down a scent, so be careful he doesn't wander out. Health problems include epilepsy and back pain. And the beagle is easy to train, knowing food is the reward. Know your breed. We'll be right back with more Pet Pals TV. If I stop smiling, call 911. Oh, I could do long in the desert sun. Oh, please roll me over. Check me for life, but don't bury me. This Humane Society of Johnson County segment on Pet Pals TV is made possible by Dryer Reinbold Subaru. The humble back seat. We believe it can be the most valuable real estate on earth. That's why we designed our newest Subaru from the back seat forward. The all new, completely restyled Subaru Forester. Love, it's what makes a Subaru a Subaru. Dryer and Reinbold Subaru of Greenwood on US 31 South and at DryerRinboldSubaru.com. Closed captioning for Pet Pals TV brought to you by Relay Indiana and in track featuring the caption telephone phone service. 
Working in TV, I've met and interviewed celebrities. On the red carpet. And other well-known people. I'm very comfortable in front of the camera. It's the telephone that was intimidating. Because of my hearing loss, I couldn't hear well on a regular phone. Hello? Now with my Captel phone, I'm making contacts in a busy world. My Captel phone allows me to read what the other person is saying. Try a Captel phone. It makes all the difference when you see what you're hearing. Get your new Toyota with zero, zero percent interest for up to 60 months. That's five years. New Corollas, zero percent up to 60 months or just $99 a month. And at Butler, you'll get more for your trade-in. I'll make sure of it. So come see us at Butler Toyota Scion. Hi, I'm Karen. And I'm Jim Roseboro. The only thing we enjoy more than our critters is helping you find the perfect home for you and your pets. We've spent over 20 years helping people realize their real estate dreams. Whether you are selling, buying, building, or investing in real estate, we're here to help. Contact us. We're your Pet Pals TV Realtors, the spouse of selling houses. And we'll find the perfect home for you. We're back on Pet Pals TV. Debbie Knox from one of our contributors, Wish TV Indianapolis, and a story that involves uh, pets that mm -hmm. you've been involved with for years. That's right. Uh, Paul, it's nice to be here again. This is a story about Nick Bennett, and he's an Iraqi veteran who was pretty seriously injured back in 2005, mm -hmm. came back with some injuries, was healed up, but had some PTSD issues. So this is the story of his desire for uh, a dog that would help him with PTSD and some of the frustrations with that. I heard a whistle. I knew I wasn't coming home. I leaned over, saw my hand. Yeah, I live every day in Iraq. Trash on the side of the road are IEDs. You have cars drive up on you. It's somebody trying to kill you. It's just Indiana. It's just fireworks. Nick Bennett did make it home to Indiana in serious condition. We introduced you to him when he returned. Took the actual shell casing in uh, my right shoulder, uh, took shrapnel on my side and uh, my left arm, and then uh, when I got spun around, uh, tore off the whole back of my hand. Nick's physical pain lingers, and he'll soon get a service dog to help him with mobility issues. But he's also hoping the dog will help ease his post-traumatic stress disorder. So it's more than just companionship. It's a physical presence of like having your brother and sister in combat. Somebody's got your sick, somebody's got your back. There are thousands of people just like Nick. In fact, in 2011 alone, over 200,000 returning vets were treated for PTSD. Medication and therapy are answers, but more veterans are convinced the unconditional love and loyalty of a dog might just be the answer for some vets with PTSD. Let's embrace. In Indiana, service dogs are trained by prison inmates through ICANN, the Indiana Canine Assistance Network. Visit. The director, Sally Irvin, says dogs can be trained for PTSD, but the VA has been dragging its feet. There was a study going on uh, in Florida with some service dogs, and then that got put on hold for a while, and it's very difficult finding out exactly where that study is now. Erwin Stavroff of Florida is the man who got that study started by lobbying his congressman for a multi-million dollar appropriation. Would you believe that even today, they are still doing research with that money. Research, when all they have to do is see the results of any, any individual that has PTSD with his dog. It has just moved very slow. Former Congressman Ron Klein is frustrated that the study stalled. When we did some checking into this recently, we found that uh, uh, the VA had stopped the program for a while and didn't add more dogs in, something that to me, I'm sure, could have been resolved fairly quickly. So veterans like Kenny Bass, who want a dog for their PTSD, instead had to get one through donations and loans, not the VA. After all his troubles, Kenny founded BattleBuddy.org to help other vets navigate the system. Kenny's dog Atlas is with him night and day. It really makes a difference on levels I don't even think I understand yet. And it's really kind of enabled healing in ways that, you know, I wasn't seeing, you know, I didn't, I didn't expect. What Atlas brings to Kenny is the peace of mind that Nick is hoping for, the security of having a battle buddy. What would that dog do for that soldier? Um, It's going to give us our lives back. 
Okay, there's the original story. This comes up a lot, not just in Indianapolis, but across the Midwest, across the country, I guess. It does. This is a real serious problem for all the returning vets who have PTSD. Mm -hmm. A number of them would like to have dogs, and they have to go other places other than the VA to get these dogs. They're highly trained. They can sometimes be expensive, so it's a real frustration. But now there are some uh, progress? There is, and that's because these guys go to organizations and find these animals who are so highly trained. So that's what Nick Bennett's story is about right now. Nick, you are absolutely amazing, and words cannot tell you how every day you save my life, and I am more than proud to present Festus to you. We got our first look at the dog assigned to Nick Bennett at a ceremony at the women's prison. Krista, an inmate and trainer, turned the dog over to Nick, and even then it looked like a pretty good match. But we wanted to know if the dog was making a difference, so we checked back a few days later. It's like I've never been injured before. Um, I mean, you know, the, the PTSD, the TBI, parts that are missing, you know, none of that's coming back. Nick Bennett, who claims he's really never been much of a dog lover, has found a lifelong friend in Festus, a friend who understands what Nick needs to calm his PTSD. You know, when I go out in public now, uh, in just short of two days of having him, he was already checking all the doors in the mall where I didn't have to do that anymore. Um, because whenever I go out, I always do a threat assessment. Festus has reduced the stress for Nick's wife, Rachel, as well. I don't feel like I have to be constantly watching and aware of our surroundings or what's going on with Nick. And not that, I mean, I still do, but it's, it's a less um, stress on me to have to do that. Relieving stress is just one part of Festus's training. Absolutely. He knows dozens of commands, many tailored to Nick's needs. Festus, come. The kitchen can be tricky, especially retrieving pots and pans. Festus, brace. I can get down, I can do whatever I need. Brace. Um, yes, good job. And lights. Festus can turn out the lights. Good job. He can yep. retrieve lost keys, shoes, and he can be persistent. When Nick retreats into an ugly memory, Festus nudges and nudges, bringing Nick back to the here and now. Nudge, good boy. The relief from anxiety is evident for Nick and his family, all because this well-trained dog is at his side every minute of every day. It's still hard to wrap my head around that I've got my life back. All right, there's the story of uh, Festus, and it is a good story with a happier ending. Oh, absolutely. Festus is a beautiful dog. I, I wanted to take this dog home <laughs> after I got to meet him. He's made Nick and his family very, very happy. And we've enjoyed uh, getting the update, and our thanks to uh, one of our family members, Joy Hernandez. You've got that right. Joy has taken, uh, you know, as you know, she has a passion for animals. She has dogs of her own, and right. she uh, shot and edited this story. We're very grateful for her energy in all this. And we're grateful to have Debbie Knox from Indianapolis and Wish TV. Thanks for stopping by. Hey, thank you, Paul. And there's more pet pals coming right up. Indiana summers are great for outdoor fun, but unfortunately the warm temperatures also mean more parasites for our pets. Fleas, ticks, and heartworm carrying mosquitoes are out there waiting to feed on your furry friend. At Noah's Animal Hospitals, we will help you find the best medication to keep your pets safe and meet your specific needs. Now with eight central Indiana locations, there's a Noah's nearby ready to be the best friend of your best friend. Do you have a love for animals and want to turn that passion into a career in a growing field? If the answer is yes, then the Veterinary Technology Program at Harrison College is for you. This exciting and rewarding program is accredited by the American Veterinary Medical Association. Flexible day and evening courses offered at two of our convenient campuses. This comprehensive animal patient care curriculum enables students to gain practical hands-on experience utilizing the on-site kennel and surgery suite. Start your enrollment today. Classes are forming now. Harrison College, career focused, success driven. Hi, I'm Rebecca Stevens, Executive Director of the Humane Society for Hamilton County, and we invite you to Dog Day Afternoon featuring Wolfstock. Saturday, August 24th, and for the very first time, we're going to be having the event in Fishers, and Paul Petit, there better not be any rain. We believe it's important to dress alike on the Pet Pals team. Look at that. 
Even Louie is in on the act, too. Please go to our website, PetPalsTV.com, and you can find up there in the corner. Click on it, and you can look like we do. We've got your size. Hello, Dad? It's been a long time. Really sorry about that. I couldn't hear you over the phone, so I stopped using it. How are you able to call me now? It's this new phone. Caption Telephone Service uses voice recognition technology to show captions of everything your caller says. Before CapTel, I missed too much, including you. Learn more at captelloffer.com. Happy news on Pet Pals TV. We're adding to our staff <laughs> and my family. Mabel is my foster to adopt, and it worked. I'm going to adopt her. I needed someone to pep Louie up and get him enjoying life again. And by gosh, she's done it. But it wasn't easy. Kathy's here from Walter's Muttley Crew, president of this rescue. Mm -hmm. And Mabel, when I saw her, when we came out to do the story, I thought there's something special about her. Mm -hmm. She's kind of smart. Mm -hmm. She has a good personality. A good personality <laughs> and a face only a mommy could love. Yeah. I thought all those things. What is she again? She's a... well. Brillo pad and <laughs> I think poodle Jack Ru or yeah. Parsons Jack Russell something like that something Rapteria. like that yeah we had a long talk about the cats and we're mm -hmm. fine with that now mm -hmm. and she and Louie are fine together so I will adopt her that's wonderful is that okay oh absolutely it's a deal it's a deal all right here is two hundred dollars my adoption fee Thank she you. has shots mm -hmm. she's microchipped she's had all her vaccinations she's spayed obviously okay. heartworm everything's done she's de loused dewormed you name it and we had a long talk i said about the cat so mm -hmm. she's fine with that mm -hmm. uh, now i have a breed i have two shelter kitties i have a feral kitty and i have a rescue i think i'm done for now all right let me <laughs> sign okay, my papers agreement sign oh, your life away. thank you louis is that okay little sister it's okay all right and with that we're going to take you and show you Waldo's Muttley Crew. Some folks think big cities have the best shelters or that rescues aren't needed in the countryside. Waldo's Muttley Crew is here in Monrovia, Indiana to prove them wrong. A fairly new rescue, they take adoptable pets from high kill shelters and individuals who need to surrender their animals. And yes, there are lots of strays too. Many of these pets need love and medical attention. We have about 40 dogs 40. in the rescue right now. So, Wondering, why did they pick the name Waldo to headline their rescue? Waldo was a badly abused, neglected dog taken in by this group. Um, oh, and another thing with Waldo was that it was obvious he'd been kept on a chain or kept outside. He was yeah. filthy, didn't know what a house was, didn't, didn't know how to interact with other dogs. And his tail had been cut off with a pair of scissors or a knife. Um, our vet, we didn't even say anything about it. And he said, oh, he hates it when people do that because he said, I'll do it for $6. Why do people do this? It can cause nerve damage. Yeah. Um, so whoever had him, um, had him outside and, you know, mutilated so him. They, incredibly, Waldo's original owner surfaced and demanded to claim him. He was returned to them, only to be chained outside and abused again. After a legal battle, Waldo was returned to the rescue. Unfortunately, though, his days were numbered, and he passed away a few months later. But he was surrounded by love and caring, and not left outside, alone on a chain. So Waldo's memory lives on. I know we're, we're very, very careful where the dogs go. Um, we do reference checks, home visits. Um, you know, most of these dogs have been through a lot, and we don't want them to be through, you know, through any more. You can find Waldo's Muttley Crew on Facebook or our website. As you can see, even after abuse or neglect, they don't give up on us. We'll be right back with more Pet Pals TV. Do you have a love for animals and want to turn that passion into a career in a growing field? If the answer is yes, then the Veterinary Technology Program at Harrison College is for you. This exciting and rewarding program is accredited by the American Veterinary Medical Association. Flexible day and evening courses offered at two of our convenient campuses. This comprehensive animal patient care curriculum enables students to gain practical hands-on experience utilizing the on-site kennel and surgery suite. Start your enrollment today. Classes are forming now. Harrison College, career focused, success driven. Charlie always waited faithfully for you. But now that he's lost, it's you waiting for him. Put your mind at ease. Invisible Fence brand keeps tails wagging safely in the yard and off the streets. We believe it's important to dress alike on the Pet Pals team. Look at that. It even Louie is in on the act, too. Please go to our website, PetPalsTV.com, and you can find up there in the corner. Click on it, and you can look like we do. We've got your size.
Bed and Biscuits, send your dog on vacation. Indoor and outdoor kennels in a country setting, daycare or long term. 867-BONE, online, bedandbiscuit.us. Bed and Biscuit, where a dog can be a dog. Get your new Toyota with zero, zero percent interest for up to 60 months. That's five years. New Luxury Edition Sienna, zero percent up to 60 months or just $249 a month. And at Butler, you'll get more for your trade-in. I'll make sure of it. So come see us at Butler Toyota Scion. Applying for Social Security Disability Benefits or have you been denied need to appeal? We can help. There's no fee unless we win the case for you and we've been serving Central Indiana's legal needs since 1972. Please call us at 844-1377. Hi, I'm Rebecca Stevens, Executive Director of the Humane Society for Hamilton County, and we invite you to Dog Day Afternoon featuring Wolfstock. Saturday, August 24th, and for the very first time, we're going to be having the event in Fishers, and Paul Petit, there better not be any rain. Well, sometimes you get a lot of stories about the bad things that people do to animals, but we've got some of the other side. Yes, we do. Trudy is an angel to animals, and in fact, she wins our first award. And here's that story. Surprise! Trudy Baldwin, come here. Come here, Trudy. Come on over here and stand right next to me. And you have been nominated for our first Angel to Angels, Angel to Animals Award. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> Trudy Baldwin is truly an angel to these homeless animals at the Humane Society for Hamilton County. She walks the dogs and keeps them company just about every day, rain or shine. But it's just kind of an obsession with me that um, I love doing it and try to help the dogs as much as I can. I can't take them all home, so I come here. <laughs> you volunteer. I volunteer. Trudy gets some nice gifts and lots of love from her coworkers and friends. Shelter Director Rebecca Stevens says it's a well-deserved thank you. Trudy really took the lead in getting the dog walking program started with the volunteers, um, and she trains those dog walkers. I mean, she's just an integral part of what we do here, so well-deserved. Well-deserved. All right, for Trudy Baldwin and Humane Society for Hamilton County, first Angel to Animals Award. Congratulations. Patty Spittler for Pet Pals TV. <sighs> I'm right there with Louie. I'm exhausted. We did a lot this last half hour. Oh, then I'll take you out for a walk. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and it's time for my uh, yeah, food dish, too. So we've got to go. But we dish 24-7 online. Oh, we'll we're you. everywhere. Facebook, Twitter, mm -hmm. PetPalsTV.com right, is our right. home base for all of us. So wherever you see us, we certainly appreciate you sitting down and watching. And we're back again soon right here on Pet, Pet Pals, Pals TV. TV.